Capricorn singles, welcome. Super singles, completely singles. This should meet the soulmate read. This is for mid-November uh, 2021. This is a always positive read because here we're just asking who's the right one for you. Um, God, source, spirit, everyone look at it. Who's the one that's the best? Uh, I think there's lots of soulmates. So who's next up? That's the best person for um, soul growth of the Capricorn here. And I do think of it as kind of clearing the runway and asking them to land. Maybe they've been circling around because we've been busy doing something else. And now when we're single, it's kind of a special time, you know. It's an invitation if you want to be. That's what this is going to involve. Invitation to get to know this person. Look at personality, behavior, lifestyle. Get to, uh, some stories they might tell. Um, something about their childhood. Look at the emotional, intellectual, sexual, and lifestyle areas, the four pillars of the relationship, guys. Purely predictive read. I don't see this being someone that's in your life, no Capricorns. So get back to me. It's mid-November and let me know. Okay. Emotional. Five of Swords, your person. Pull two cards for the emotional aspects and the Ten of Pentacles. Hmm. So here I see the moon as well as uh, the childhood here, the emotional nature here. The moon is wounded, this Five of Swords. And it's an air moon. It feels like Libra. Maybe it's in the seventh house. Maybe it's conjunct uh, Mars, a square opposite Mars. A kind of combative feeling. Again, I'm saying this is your soulmate. I'm not saying that they're perfect. Uh, and they would have had a difficult childhood. Like, I think they grew up uh, with abundance. But I think uh, their story is going to be about their childhood. Um, they grew up uh, with a mom and dad. And ostensibly a stable relationship uh, of, that their parents had. And they had everything they needed. They were either wealthy or, um, you know, I don't know what you call upper middle class. They didn't want for anything. Um, but there was a emotional unavailability uh, by both parents uh, for this person, too. Um, and with the Libra moon, how it wounds them is, uh, and I think this is they would be dealing with. They have the Ten of Pentacles here, so they have a lot of strength here, too. Maybe Saturn's trying the moon or something, so, um, you know, but they would probably have tried to please the parents or be coy or woo a parent, you know? Like that Libra energy. High Priestess. This is an intellectual position where I also read the sun and the lovers. Wow. So I think you have a Pisces sun here. Libra moon and a Pisces sun. So their soft spot is their soft spot. Another way of putting it. And now you, you have this wounded Libra moon energy. And now you have the lovers. And this is kind of in the conscious up here. In the unconscious position of the consciousness. Um, so when I look at the lover's energy, I see something deep inside of them, um, uh, some kind of energy. Um, and what I see with them is they're just, they're very, very drawn to relationships, you know. Um, that also could be the energy of a seventh house um, sun, of any sign. So seventh house Pisces sun, most definitely probably gonna be into relationships. And, um, so this is someone for whom relationships are kind of everything, uh, Capricorn. Um, they would definitely be that type of person. They would be into soulmates probably, wouldn't be a stretch. 
with the high priestess here and the lovers really wouldn't be surprised to see this person into the uh, eighth house energy of the occult maybe into astrology maybe into tarot anything occulted okay wheel of fortune in the sexual position here guys and the love nature sexual and love nature this one over wheel of fortune over strength both major arcana um so this person male or female they're going to be a gorgeous human specimen um and and whatever it means to you to say someone's well endowed i think they're well endowed <laughs> here you know So it's got to be Aries too. Aries Mars person Pisces Sun with the Aries Mars. That's why so many times you know uh, uh, you know Pisces are a lot tougher than you would think you know or uh, tougher than they seem. It's like just because they care doesn't mean they're not tough and strong. Why is that? Because a lot of them got uh, Aries Mars. And Aries Mars is just going to be tough. It's, you can't take the toughness out of an Aries Mars by ill placing it. You can wound the moon and cause a lot of um, pain that way. Um, well, I'm not going to lie. This is the kind of person they might have had more than one uh, date. Uh, they, they, they may have, have a rich history, sex life, okay? Um, I always say, like, if you if you were trying to fill a position, do you want someone that's inexperienced? Or would you want to hire someone with a lot of experience in whatever you're hiring for? And this person may have a lot of experience. I got that just off the high priestess where we did the sexual and, and love nature there. Um, and I think they might also have a Pisces uh, Venus. I know it's a Jupiter card, but... You know, co co rules Pisces. So Pisces, uh, Venus here, and Aries, Mars. Uh, very relationship oriented. Um, they're a lot stronger than they probably come across, and I think by that and the way they look, um, like they uh, might look a little uh, uh, weak or frail uh, or something like this. Uh, when in fact they're not at all, you know, uh, or wiry, strong. Um, so uh, maybe their Virgo rising comes to mind. I'm not sure on that one here. And they'll probably tell you about their parents, you know, or parent, when they might, might focus on one or the other more. Um, That'll be part of their story, you know. Um, but one of the main things with them is just love and relationship. They're gonna be, they're gonna be on their social media. These are the memes, you know. It'll be stuff about romantic stuff and sayings and memes that are uh, probably, you know, deep and seriously into soulmates, twin flames, life partners, all of that, guys. Seven of Pentacles. This is in their core value and lifestyle area. And that's coming up over the Eight of Cups, all things. So, let me see. This is kind of the trickiest part of the reading for me for some reason. I often am not going to get any um, uh, astrological associations here. Um, but I think what this literally means, if you look at them together, um, Seven of Pentacles and then the Eight of Cups. Uh, making a very realistic assessment of um, reciprocation and are you know measuring the, the crop you know they're thinking to themselves about about everything particularly about anything to do with work um, it, it, am I going to get out of this more than I put into it what's in it for me there's an, an attitude like that's kind of mercenary um, but I think it serves them very well and if it if they Feel that, and they make a serious assessment, and they're not spurious, they take this seriously. If they see that it does measure up and it is good for them and a good idea for them, a good going to be a good crop for them to grow, um, you know, they're all in. If not, they're all out in a heartbeat. 
So they, uh, this is a Pisces. I gotta say, remember it's your soulmate. I'm not. Don't think they're gonna ghost you. But that's exactly the energy I could get with this, with the High Priestess and now the Eight of Cups down here. It's like if they, you know, they just expect things to measure up, people to measure up. And when they don't, I think this is like they do this at work, man. Their career, man. Well, what they do here, um, they could do something quite subtle. And very well, it could even be around uh, relationship stuff. Maybe they're a therapist, maybe they're a social worker something like that guys um but so they may tell you this story it's like you know as soon as i realized that that's the way it was you know i walked i walked that may be something here from them i walked it's like um they're just not going to tolerate so they're definitely not someone that's going to stay in like a bad relationship also not going to happen if it isn't real and solid some of the ones and they're just they're not going to uh really stay in it um and they're probably someone here um they take sex um with this energy it's like they love everyone you know uh i've had the pisces of venus um and it really is kind of unconditional but with the aries mars um it, I just can't tell you how hot this this could be. This is your person, so I go with it. I mean, I think they're kind of going to be dominant about it, and it's just sex with them. This is this is the passionate sex. This is fiery. This is like whale, you know, kapow conflagration you're going to get from them. Um, and I don't know how that's going to feel. Uh, I think you're going to be ready by the time you're just one date. You know, it's like. They're just going to uh, meld, and um, it's going to be kind of amazing. Um, so I think we got an idea about some of their signs, core signs, and some idea about uh, their story and personality. So let me know, guys, what you think. It's purely predictive read. This may not be someone coming into your life until after you see this anyway. Mid-November time frame. And if so, get back, give me a yell. Do check out the Soul Family Reads up uh, for the weekend today. Um, put a link here below. I want to put these up. Um, so thank you guys.